Howdy folks! Welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. I'm your host, Vaughn Troy, the Steampunk Desperado, and this is my lovely wife, Arliss. Welcome back. And we are very happy to have you here with us, because we're going to be talking about a new series. It's a Netflix series, actually, and it's been, a lot of people have been talking about it. It is called... Love, Death, and Robots. And that premiered March 15th, 2019, so it's very recent. The creator of the series is Tim Miller, who directed the 2016 Marvel superhero movie Deadpool. And if you've seen that, you have a bit of an idea of what this series is like. And what it consists of is 18 short sci-fi animations. None are longer than 17 minutes, and many of them are shorter. So, easily digestible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're amazing. The, um, the animation is all different styles. You've got stop motion. Uh, one of them had um, live action. A little um, bit, yeah. It was mixed. Yeah. Um, and uh, animated cartoon style. Um, and then there's the 3D animation. Yes. And then there's the CGI, which is so realistic that you have to wait until you see the characters' faces before yes. you can tell that it was actually Absolutely all true. animated. Yeah. You know, it's the Uncanny Valley thing. Yeah. They still can't do faces perfectly. Which is good, because otherwise they would put real actors out yeah. of business. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so... It was, I heard it was inspired by the 1981 movie Heavy Metal. Did you, did you see I that? I saw that. I saw yeah. that. It was okay. It was, it was silly. It was an animation. It was a lot of, uh, I remember a lot of D&D &D type things, you know, swords and sorceries and, and buxom young witches and things like that. <laughs> but anyway, um, so one thing about, and like, and like Heavy Metal, this is adult themed. Uh, so it's rated TVMA and there's lots of nudity. Um, there's graphic violence in many of them, uh, you know, heads getting chopped off and so on, and what I call the mandatory mandatory f bombs. I swear, that, and that's ironic, not ironic there, that there was some kind of profanity in every one. So if that offends you, oh well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was it's awesome nonetheless. And basically, uh, what this is is all these different creators doing all these different. Things. Most of them involve robots, not all of them. Some are flat, uh, flat out horror, but they're all pretty cool. A lot of the scripts were adapted by a fellow named Philip Gillette, who I'm not familiar with, but he's a genius apparently because of all the, the way he incorporated all these different things together. Some of them were based on existing short stories. Uh, there's a guy named John Scalzi, you've probably heard of him. He's a fairly notable sci-fi writer. Three of the stories were his. Uh, but a lot of them were different authors, and some are completely original, written by the same people who, the same guy or gal who actually, who actually did the direction. So a lot of variety, and so we'd like to go over ones that we like the best, and we're going to focus on the our absolute favorite a little bit later. But first of all, the very first one is called Sunny's Edge, and that's about these. It's kind of cyberpunk, and it's about these people who battle as monsters. Mm -hmm. they, they control these monsters with their minds. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very violent and exciting and so a nice twist ending. Yes. So that one was very cool. And it kind of gets you into the series and shows you exactly what you're it's in for. Perfect start. Uh, Shapeshifters. Loved it. And that one loved is it. a military one. It takes place in Afghanistan in the present day. And these, it's like, I believe it's a Marine Corps unit. Mm -hmm. And there's two werewolves. Um, they're very handsome too. It's yes. something for the ladies, and this is this is a very realistic <laughs> CGI, and and it's it's cool. They have a lot of uh, supernatural battles in this one, and I uh, also have to mention Suckers of Souls, which was a more traditional um, animation, mm -hmm. and this is involved some archaeologists who, who stumble upon a nest of vampires, some some very dark humor here. Yes, uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, but our absolute favorite one. The one that we got us excited enough to make this video is called Good Hunting. And that is... Um, a fox. She's a fox. It's a Chinese <laughs> steampunk. Yes, yes, it's a Chinese steampunk involving a fox, yes. And it was written by... The story was written by a guy named Ken, Ken Liu, good Chinese name. Um, and it takes place, as a lot of good steampunks do, in the late 1800s. And this time, not in England or America, and it's a, it's a small village in China. And at a time when magic still exists. And uh, 
it, the central characters are, well, first of all, there's the son of a spirit hunter. And if you watch anime, you'll be familiar with this theme. It's like, these are, these are people who, who hunt like demons and ghosts and spirits who are plaguing humans. And uh, this guy has been tasked with eliminating this fox spirit who has been um, bewitching the son of a wealthy merchant. And he wants, he wants this, this creature gone. You know, the so merchant does. When she, when she comes on screen, if you will, um, she's elegant. She's, she's breathtaking. Is, and uh, that's so beautiful. And this is a Mulan-style mm -hmm. animation, very reminiscent of that. It's beautiful. And uh, the furries will love it, too, because <laughs> at a point when she's transforming, she has the little ears on top of her head and the bushy fox tail. She's a fox. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there's some... But the father... Uh, Leon's father is tasked with killing her, and so there's some, some violence here. And the son, he is, the son Leon, he is helping the father, but he discovers that the, that the fox lady had a pup, who is also this beautiful young girl, and he does not tell on her. He lies to his father, because his father wants to kill all the pups, and he said, no, nope, didn't see any. So after the father, well, he keeps on this secret relationship with her, it's not romantic. It's not romantic. No. Um, despite the fact that these fox girls tend to have romantic res uh, relationships with humans, it's more like a brother and sister thing. Mm -hmm. and, and you really, it comes into question, and I think he even questions his father, not out loud, because due to respect, but um, who was at fault? Was no. it truly um, the the temptress, the fox temptress, yeah. if you will, who um, enslaved the merchant's son, or was the merchant's son obsessed with her and therefore, as her daughter yeah. says, has to come to him so he would be quiet <laughs> because moans. he moans and screams for her. So yeah. I, I think he's I think he's conflicted. Yeah. But out of respect, he uh, his after his father passes away, um, he befriends and he keeps... The relationship. He's he's helping with, her out with the adult with the daughter because um, her name is Yen and uh, as um, as beautiful as her she's mother, as beautiful as her mother, and uh, can, can transform into a really cute little fox. But I like like you see this theme a lot in fantasy is that magic is dying because of technology. All the steam engines are coming in. You see the locomotives chugging through the village and so on and. Uh, She's having, Yen is having trouble transforming back into a fox. And so we have uh, Leanne going out, doing some of her hunting for her. He brings her wild game to eat. And, uh, and basically at this point, you know, they're both saying, what, what are we going to do with our lives? And he tells her he's moving to Hong Kong. And he's, he's, he's very clever. He's a mechanic and engineer type. And he goes to Hong Kong and he is working on the railroad to maintain the trains that the British have and in his spare time he makes these really cool little steam machines, yeah. little steam rabbit. Little, yeah, little steam uh, horned rabbit. So he, it hops he, around and he, he tinkers awesome around with stuff. Yeah. And, I, and I think one of my favorite things is, as um, us steampunk lovers when we see the animation or the live action, you have the zeppelins and you have the bicycle with mm -hmm. the wings and yeah. you have these things you normally see uh, however, with this one, they have more robots. They have more steam engines. They have a little twist on it. A, you have um, a robot-driven uh, rickshaw. Uh -huh. <laughs> so a little bit different yeah. twist on it to, to give yeah. you some more of that uh, feel. That you have a lot of feel. glimpses of that in the it's background. Very just Very fun. Just, yeah. And so, anyway. He, we won't give away. Yeah. We won't give away all of it. But at one point, he hears this, this lady's crying out for help, and these British are kind of harassing this Chinese girl. And it it's turns Yen. out it's Yen, and she's in Hong Kong. She's working as a courtesan, actually. Because uh, what else can she do? She can no longer transform into a fox. And her only asset now is her great beauty. At least that's what she says. And so all these British just love her. But, um, you know, it's causes some problems. It and, is dangerous. And, yeah, it's dangerous because some of these guys are, are nasty. And, uh, and, and Leon has to come to her help and use his skills uh, because there's a theme here that she can no longer hunt. And so 
there's a theme of transformation, and he helps her to become the huntress again that she once was. But we're not going to give away what it was. But it, it's just beautiful. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the whole thing throughout yes. this one particular episode, which was our our very favorite, is the transformation from old to new. Yeah. Um. And and I think that that carries it throughout uh, the characters, um, the city, the environment. It all is... goes from from old to new, and it's uh, it's exciting too. This is a very steampunky Hong Kong. We have uh, airships <laughs> all over the place, yes. and and uh, the smokestacks uh, belching out the coal smoke and so on. So it's it's a lot of wonderful imagery. This episode, we would definitely give it our highest rating, 5 out of 5 gears. Absolutely. As far as the others, we don't have time to go all over, all, over all of them. Some were fantastic, uh, like the other ones we mentioned. Those were all like 5 gear episodes. Some were kind of meh, but I wouldn't give them any, any less than 3 true. gears yes, at the very great. least. They were all, at the very least, interesting and worth watching. And averaging them all out, I came up with a score of 4.1 gears out of 5. So that's pretty good. So once you see it, comment below. Let us know which one was your favorite and if you like this thing. Yes. Please like and share and spread it around. We'd love to, love to hear what you think about it as well. And have you seen a Netflix series you'd like us to see? Comment below. Yes, absolutely. So for now, this is Vaughn Troidy and Steampunk Desperado and... Mrs. Desperado. Saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. extraordinary.